Hi, my name is Robert Williams, and uh, I'm working uh, on a project in Burunga National Park um, to try to uh, end the widespread use of charcoal as a household fuel. And the reason for that is the charcoal production in the park is essentially what's destroying the park and all the mountain gorilla habitat there, along with all the other habitat of all the other animals in the park. Uh, anyway, and so what we're shooting for is to come up with an alternative fuel such as this, which is a biomass briquette. Um, this particular briquette that we're making uh, was pioneered by the Legacy Foundation, a husband and wife team um, outside of Oregon. Uh, and essentially it's made up of leaves, grass, um, any, essentially any waste, biomass, agro-waste, anything you can find essentially. But the main thing is that we're trying to make things that are um, ultimately not made out of wood so we don't have to cut down trees. And so right here I have a mix of slurry. Um, this particular mix is, is uh, a mix that's kind of similar to what you might find um, in a big city where um, there's not a lot of biomass growing around the city so they're going to be using waste materials like sawdust and paper and this one happens to be made of uh, wood chips uh, and newspaper here. The fibers actually um, from the paper help hold the briquette together if you're just using like waste stuff like sawdust. So this will this will mix it up and it'll all break apart and become just paper fibers and then I'll mix that with some sawdust, some wood chips, and we'll just form the briquettes out of that. Might have to get a little more paper. That'll definitely do it. So the first step in the process to, is to prepare the materials. Um, and in Congo, um, in the rural areas, the first step is to collect biomass, the leaves and the grasses, and to actually compost them. And you need to compost them because you need to, one, brown out the, the green in the leaves, which is the chlorophyll, because that produces a carcinogenic smoke. Um, and then also you want to break down the fibers of the material so it forms a good briquette. So essentially in the rural areas, the, the first thing is going to be to prepare compost. In the um, city areas, it's going to be basically collecting biomass, mixing it up into a slurry like, like we have here. And then the next thing is going to be to actually press it in these tubes. And you'll see that there's holes in this tube to let the water escape so we can end up with a compressed briquette. So I'm going to take the briquette platform here and I'm going to essentially charge it with biomass. So the first thing I'll do is put in a center pipe um, the center pipe acts as a guide, but more importantly, um, it puts a hole in the briquette, which actually improves the way the briquette burns. So the outside of the briquette actually insulates the center core that's burning. So it's a little bit like a stove unto itself, although these work even better if they're in an improved stove. And then the next thing I'll do is take a, this ring, which is a separator ring, which allows me to make more than one briquette, and I'll push it down. You can see the water coming out of the holes as the material compresses, and then I'll load it up again. And usually you'll have a team of about six people doing this, and they can really make some headway when working together, because one person's preparing the biomass, another person's preparing a cylinder, and a good team can produce about 500 briquettes a day. And just to give you an idea how many people that serves, the average person uses about three briquettes per day in a family cooking situation. So I'm just pre-charging it right here and now I'm going to take it over to the press and actually put the heavy compression on it. Okay, so this is, a, this is our test press. This was the first one that was built for our project. It was done here in my garage and uh, from here um, Virginia took the idea and ran with it in uh, South Kivu and had a local carpenter build a press just like this. Um, so essentially the idea was just to test the concept here. She then has taken it and uh, more than run with it in the Congo, where there are now 600 of these presses in operation. And I uh, hope to have another 400 by the year's end. So the first thing I'm going to do here at this stage is press the briquette down in the first position, which just kind of does the initial compaction of the briquette. Then I'll lift it up, slide the platform down here into the final position. Quite so far. There we go. And you can 
see the water exiting the cylinder. And we'll come up, and now we'll just put it on the ejection lip over here. Mesh can we come over and just slowly come down until I see. Okay, go ahead slowly. You can see the briquettes exiting the bottom of the cylinder. And come up. Just do it. Eight hand the rest of the way. It's as simple as that. You can see two two briquettes right there, separated by the ring. Just pop this out, and then from here these would go into a drying onto a drying rack outside or some kind of like modified drying greenhouse. And that's essentially what they're using and they can be made out of all sorts of different materials. But the main thing again is to try not to use wood if at all possible. So dry mountain, there's a briquette.